Building a commander deck is a complex construction. Perhaps most difficult of all is the proper proportions of your commander deck's mana base. Knowing the ratio of lands to spells is often not enough. Within your deck's lands, how many should be fetch lands? How many should be filter lands, shock lands, basic lands? This video will guide you through the process of building a five-color commander mana base, with emphasis on land ratios for each land type. It will offer both a budget and optimal build for your deck. If you have not already seen my videos explaining what the commander format is, how to construct your first commander deck, or how to choose your commander, you may do so here, here, and here. Please note, this video is meant both as a guide for players who do not know where to begin building their mana base, or for players having difficulty with their mana base. It is not meant as the final and only word on the subject. Quite the opposite. Commander is a format with a multitude of options. This video is simply meant to help those who need it, who do not know where or how to begin, but it is not meant to dictate hard or absolute rules. The basics. Building a five color commander mana base requires you to understand the average CMC or converted mana cost of your deck. On average, does your deck have spells with a high CMC or a low CMC? This will affect many important factors. If your deck has mostly spells that require a high converted mana cost, such as a five color control deck, then you should focus on three primary colors and consider the remaining two to be spells flash colors. The best way to proceed for such a deck would in fact be to begin with our guide for a tri-color deck, but then to add one basic land outside of those three colors for each of your splashed colors, as well as to include the five color lands we will later discuss in this video. If your deck has a low to medium average converted mana cost, then this guide is for you, especially for decks such as Slivers, which has a multitude of low CMC creatures or Scion, where getting out the general fast and reliably is your primary goal. Your mana base must be built to achieve five color access and quickly. But how? Generally speaking, no pun intended, the ratio of lands to spells is 38 plus lands, eight accelerants for a total average of 46 mana sources. As always, your specific deck and its unique mana curve will affect this formula. You very easily could need to run 40 lands instead of 38 in a five color commander deck. And if you do find trouble playing your five color mana base, the very first fix I would recommend trying is to increase to 40 lands. But this video will work within the template of 38 lands and eight accelerants, and your playing and testing of your own commander construction will need to determine if any adjustments are necessary. So of those 38 lands in a five color commander deck, what does the ratio look like. Fetch lands. Fetch lands are one of the two most critical components of a five color mana base, and you should run a total of 10. Ideally, this would be by using the five Zendikar fetch lands and the five Onslaught slash Tarkir fetch lands, but that can be very expensive. Luckily, there are great budget alternatives available for all 10 of these optimum fetch lands. You will, of course, be sacrificing efficiency for your budget, largely in the area of tempo, but the budget options are still quite efficient effective and quite affordable. While you should strive to have all 10 color combinations present in the fetch lands that you use, it is not as critical as it will be for your dual slash shock lands. So for example, if you do not have a bloodstained mire, you can include a rocky tar pit, but it is also acceptable for you to include, say, a Crosan verge as a substitution, even if you are also running a windswept heath. In fact, Crosan verge is great because it will grab both a plains and a forest which means two dual slash shock lands for a total of four color options. Crosan Verge is a great card and the first budget option to consider if you do not have access to all 10 optimal fetch lands. What other budget fetch land options are there? Another great budget option are the Mirage fetch lands, which function very similarly to the Onslaught fetches, except that they come into play tapped and do not cost a life to use. So Windswept Heath has the Mirage option of Grassland, 
Sands. Polluted Delta has the Mirage option of Bad River. Bloodstained Mire, of course, has the option of Rocky Tar Pit. And Wooded Foothills has the option of Grassy Valley. Unfortunately, the Zendikar fetches do not have as ideal a budget replacement. But you can still use the Mirage Slow Fetches, even though your color options are slightly off. As you will see in a moment with a complete set of dual slash shock lands, one fetch land can fetch any color needed. So while not ideal to replace your scalding tarn with a bad river, it is still more than acceptable. Another option are the Alara Panoramas, but these are even less ideal because they can only fetch basics. You should turn to these as budget replacements last. If you are on a very tight budget, you can use all five of the Mirage Slow Fetches, a Crosan Verge, and four of the Alara Panoramas, which is the extreme budget build, and though far from ideal, will still function acceptably for a five color commander deck. Again, the goal is to have as many of the optimal fetch lands as possible, or failing that, five of them and five of the Mirage Slow Fetches as the second optimal build, with finally 10 budget fetch lands as the extreme budget option. So besides your basic lands, which we will cover in just a moment, what is it that you are fetching? Dual lands. Ideally, a five color mana base would run all 10 original duels, all 10 fetch lands, and since we are apparently millionaires in this dream, let's throw in a crucible of worlds just to ensure you get those fetch lands back from your graveyard. This is, of course, extremely very insanely expensive, and it is not something I can recommend. Not with a straight face, anyway. Obviously, if you have any original dual lands, these should be included, but what I will recommend for this slot, urge even, is that you pursue a complete set of shock lands. As of the filming of this video, these are still fairly affordable, although prices are climbing rapidly. The reason having all 10 shock lands is so critical in a five color commander is that doing so will enable any one fetch land to fetch for any one of four possible shock lands, meaning any one fetch land will have access to grab any single needed color. For example, a windswept heath can grab a godless shrine, or a hollowed fountain, or an overgrown tomb, or a sacred foundry, or a stomping ground, or a temple garden, meaning it can have access to all five colors. The reason shock lands are so critical in a five color commander is that they enable any one fetch land to fetch for any one of six possible shock lands, meaning any one fetch land will have access to grab any single needed color. And thus, with a complete set of ten fetches and ten shocks, each of those 10 fetch lands has access to all five colors. What about budget options? If you need budget options, you can utilize the Battle for Zendikar have lands. These are great budget options for the shock lands. But unlike the fetches, you need to ensure without fail that of your 10 dual lands, be they whatever combination of shock lands, have lands, or even original dual lands, that all 10 color combinations are indeed present. No substituting a stomping ground for a prairie stream. Prairie stream can only substitute for a hollowed fountain. What about basic lands? Basics are critical in a five color commander deck for many reasons. The least of all is protecting yourself from common commander attacks on non-basics, such as back to basics and ruination. Depending on your deck's need for utility land effects, you should run between 9 and 14 basic lands. I recommend that you start with 14 basic lands. Determine a ratio based on the color cost within your deck, and after playtesting, only then decide how many of these, usually about four to five, you wish to substitute for utility lands. For example, in a five color deck that mostly utilizes red and white, you would run four plains, four mountains, two islands, two swamps, and two forests. In a more color balanced deck, you might run instead two plains, three mountains, three islands, three swamps, and three forests. This is an area that should be paid attention to and tweaked as needed, but the proper starting number is a total of 14 basic lands. After playtesting, four to five of these basics can be swapped out for anything from utility lands, such as Reliquary Tower, to man lands or other non-shock land dual lands, as your individual deck might need. But you should not run more than four to five of these for a five color mana base. So looking at our formula, we currently have 14 basic lands, 10 fetch lands, 
lands, and 10 dual slash shock lands. Four land cards remain. You'll want to include four lands that produce any color of mana. Ideally, these are Mana Confluence, City of Brass, Command Tower, and either Reflecting Pool, which works really nicely with Command Tower in play, or Crystalline Quarry. Budget options for these include Rupture Spire, Trans Guild Promenade, and Shimmering Grotto. This brings us to 38 lands. If your deck requires 39 or 40, you can add appropriately from the choices we have already listed. But what about those eight accelerants? Dark Steel Ingot and Chromatic Lantern are must-haves in a five-color deck. Artifacts such as a Commander's Sphere, Coalition Relic, and Gilded Lotus are typically going to be included as well. And of course, Soul Ring, because Soul Ring. There's a large selection of three-cost any mana color adding mana rocks, and these of course can be used as budget alternatives, and they include cards such as Mana Lith, Vessel of Endless Rest, and many more. With our access to green, we will want to utilize Birds of Paradise, and of course classic green commander spells like Kodoma's Reach, Explosive Vegetation, and Cultivate as needed. A few additional spells to consider for a five color mana base are Prismatic Bond for perfect fixing, and only a two drop, a very nice one that I always run, Shard Convergence, which certainly is great for grabbing five lands from your deck, and I recommend that all five color mana bases make sure to run an Eternal Witness, which among other things can be used to grab a fetch land back from your graveyard. Very handy early game. So there is our general breakdown for a five color deck. Remember, of course, this is a guideline meant to help players who do not know how to go about constructing a proper five color mana base or who have been encountering difficulty with their already built one. It is far from the only strategy in build, but it is a successful build nonetheless. And in that sense, I hope very much that this video has been of some help to you. The ratios are, of course, dramatically different different for one, two, and three color decks. So stay tuned for those videos in the future. But until then, I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. And if you want to continue seeing more videos like this, you can help me out by remembering to subscribe, like, share, or just by leaving a comment. And of course, you can support the channel by visiting Patreon, where donations as low as $1 per month allow me to continue making videos such as this. Or you can visit www.talariancommunitycollege.com and support the channel by buying a t-shirt or playmat, or even coffee mug. This channel is here thanks only to your support. So thank you.